one of the most important things that I made sure to do on this is to create a dimension where you can see the inside here is 36 inches from the center and then the width of how wide the steps are going to be. I also have here a diagram that was kind of created here on the side where we have all of the tread heights and the overall height. I also made sure to incorporate a landing. This way you know when you get to the top where you would actually step onto. And then down here, one of the cool things that I did was create a connection between the tread and the side rail. Um, this is just one solution to create a connection. I did realize later that we there are other ways of connecting it from the outside through to the inside. Um, so those are details that I will probably do on another script. But now let's jump into how this was made. So we'll start off here and it's going to be a little bit weird because we do have a few things to go over here, but let's start here with the interior diameter. So here we have 36, but I did want the interior diameter to be a diameter, which means 72 inches is the space from one side to the other and 36 is the radius. Then we have 48 for how wide our steps are going to be. The other thing that I felt was critical was to create a dimension that dimensions the first tread. This way you can know how wide that tread's gonna be and you don't oversize your steps um, or undersize them. So this is a critical one and let's move on to Let's adjust some of these so you can see how everything adjusts accordingly. And then we can go here to 36 inch. Now we'll go here, interior diameter, we'll go to 60. And we'll see that this tread's getting a little bit too small. So that is why I have a six foot one here. Now let's move on to up here we have the rotation. So depending on how you want this to rotate, whether it's 360 degrees up here, or we can say angle of rotation, well, we can do minus 45. So 360 minus 45, and that is where it will end. Or we can do minus 90, and it will do not 360, but it will end here. Now the dimensions to keep in mind are going to be the initial tread size and also our head height. So this extrusion that you see here is going to be the clearance for your head when you walk up the stairs. So I made sure to add that also. So we have the angle of rotation. So if you do it at zero, it's going to be 360. Then we can add number of treads. So now if we add more treads, well, we're going to be going past 360 or the more treads it will stay at 360 but um, it will add more treads up and so that's not what we want because by code we do have a limitation you can't have more than 20 treads or 10 feet height and elevation before you have a landing so this is where you would actually want this actually at 19 because technically you're going up 20 steps or 19 steps here and then the 20th one would be here but we can also do 20 so this is one way to do it now that is one uh one way of adjusting it which is figuring out the angle that you want to rotate up to the second floor then subdivide it by how many treads and that's what we're doing here but there's also another way where we can move this over and just do the angle of the tread so if the tread angle is nine, well, we can do 20 steps where the angle between this and this is going to be nine degrees. So the more we increase the degrees here, the more rotation we're going to have. So this is a way to create steps that are not tied to a angle rotation where it lands but it more the angle of the tread and how many treads you go. And this way, it's a little bit more difficult to figure out exactly where you land and you stop. 
but this is a great way to see the functionality of what we can do here with um, Grasshopper. So to get the angle of rotation, all we do is 360 divided by what angle we want to rotate. And then this will give us the overall angle that it'll rotate up to the second floor. Then we do the addition to get a subdivision to know how many steps or how, many, or how much space in between it's gonna be. So 18 degrees to be able to have 20 treads and rotate to 360 degrees. And so that is how that's taken care of. I probably will do a tutorial on how to do this um, on its own because it's a fairly useful technique to know because you can use that on many other designs. So let's move on here to the next portion. This is going to be the offset on the ground for a few things that we need. Now let's move on to the thread extrusion height. So with this, we have the ability to move and change how deep those treads are. And you've probably seen those modern sta stairs that have these floating, oh, that's a little bit too much. These floating planks, um, well, those floating planks can have a specific thickness, so that's what this is for. The side rail extrusion, that's going to be this portion where we can now move, extrude this down further. And this is due to, let's say, the connection being there, right? Like now the connection's not is being shown. So then we extrude this down further. Then we have the side rail connection height, which is going to be this little channel. We can increase or decrease that size. Let's move on to the tread height. So that's going to determine this, the tread height. So if we went to seven, which is not to code if you're in commercial, but if you're in residential, this might even work. So you can increase that and then you get better head height also, or head clearance. We'll go here to six. Okay. Now we'll move on to the side rail depth. So how wide the side rail is going to be. And that's where the guardrail sits. So the steps hang on to the side rail and the side rail becomes the foundation or support for the guardrail. Now let's move on to here the dimensions. Well, the dimensions are, you know, some of these adjustments so we can move the overall dimension and all of these things. So this is going to determine the head height. Let's get into the connection here because I think that's one of the most fun parts of this script is how I took that connection. So I took the two original curves and I scaled it down. Connection size, extrusion. So this is going to determine how big this connection is going to be. It can be tiny. And I think this would also be determined by like how big your treads are. Like if they're really, really beefy, then you probably need a smaller bracket here. Um, so with this, we can adjust the connection size. I think that's the fun part. And it was taken care of by intersecting a line and a surface to get that location. So that extrusion, then where it intersects here, and then it gets extruded out into these. But the important thing is that we have the ability to change the size. So let's go back here, connection depth, connection size extrusion. So this is going to be by how much it's going to extrude. Here we have the connection size. So this is also tied to the spacing. So as you can see, when we decrease the size of that connection, well, we're also decreasing the spacing between the bolts. The important thing is on this side, the connection has to be smaller than on this side because obviously it decreases in size here. 
Now let's go back to connection extrusion. I'm not mistaken, this is the extrusion amount for the bolts. And the connection depth, I want to show circle. Okay. So overall, that's how I was able to take care of that. The bolt height is here, the bolt size. And lastly, let's Connection extrusion, connection size. Okay, so this is going to be the overall size. And it's taken care of by creating a circle and where that intersects, same thing. And so for the most part, I'd like to use where objects intersect to extract geometry and use that to model itself. So as you can see, that circle actually is the size of that connection. So with that being said, I'll, I did want to start doing something different from now on. I do want to have these available for free, maybe for like a day or two. And then once I've already had it out for free to share it with people that are interested in this stuff um, and you guys can play with it and see it, then I'll probably put it into the script vault and then into a optimized script for the script store. So stay tuned for those things. This is an overall script um, that I wanted to share with you guys really bad. I will be updating my website to get rid of all of the old ones and put this as kind of like the newest and latest. If you have any questions or ideas for how I can improve this, how I, or other ideas, let me know. I'd love to hear from you guys and actually create things that can help you guys more than anything. So let me know uh, what you think. Super excited to share with this with you guys, and I hope to see you next time.